Welcome friends to CNS series of interviews from a special meeting, the Breaking Ground Taking Roots, the Istanbul at 7. This potentially game-changing meeting of hundreds of civil society champions from around the world, along with some government representatives among others, happened recently in Bangkok, Thailand. This episode features a very special conversation with Julia Sanchez, President CEO of Canadian Council for International Cooperation and co-chair of CSO Partnership for Development Effectiveness or CPDE. Julia Sanchez was in conversation with CNS Managing Editor Shobha Shukla. Without any further ado, let's listen to Julia Sanchez, President CEO of Canadian Council for International Cooperation. Why is it important to have civil society organization spaces for achieving Agenda 2030? There's um, kind of generalized agreement and acceptance of the fact that civil society is a key player, a key actor in any country's democracy, peace efforts, develop, socioeconomic development efforts, um, you know, anywhere from health, from rights, um, anything that happens in a society, if civil society is not part of that, if we don't have a vibrant civil society, pushing governments to do the right thing, mobilizing people to ask and to act on issues that are important, then you don't really see progress. So Agenda 2030 is a really ambitious agenda. It covers the whole range of issues, everything from you know economic growth to um, health to education to peace building, climate change. So in all those fronts, civil society, especially locally, has to be uh, resourced and supported to be able to play its role in, in building and sustaining successful, prosperous societies. Have the Istanbul principles been helpful in the past seven years for developing CSO spaces so that they can effectively work as development actors? One of the important things that the Istanbul principles did was help us to, to articulate and then to communicate with other stakeholders, government most importantly, but donor governments, um, as private sector, parliamentarians, other stakeholders in the development landscape, to be able to communicate with them clearly what we're all about and how we, um, where we set the bar for ourselves, right? The Istanbul principles are aspirational, but they're also quite reflective of what civil society does on a day-to-day -day basis and strives to be. Um, so I think it's important that we are able to communicate to other stakeholders that we, uh, what we believe in and what are the principles that guide our work, but also that we're holding each other accountable. Uh, the Istanbul principles allows us to talk to each other uh, within the civil society community and hold ourselves accountable to these, uh, these standards. What have been the challenges we have confronted in implementing the Istanbul principles? Um, I think one of the early challenges was around um, uh, making them real for organizations. Uh, just to give an example, an activity that we supported in Canada, uh, we started um, uh, showcasing case studies of organizations that were implementing the Istanbul principles even before the Istanbul principles existed, right? So what we were trying to show to, to uh, civil society groups in Canada was, this is not rocket science. We're doing this already. We might not all be doing this all the time and across all the, the principles, but different organizations have already shown us how to implement each one of these. So let's look at those case studies. These are not you know, coming from Mars or from a totally different, these are things that many organizations in our sector have already been championing uh, innovating and, and pushing the boundaries on, on how to do them. So by showing that, um, we were able to try to demystify the principles a bit. Often when you get a new set of principles or a new code, the automatic reaction tends to be, oh my gosh, there's something new we have to learn and we have to... Actually, a lot of it is not that new. Of course, there might be you know areas of improvement, um, areas where organizations have to grow. Um, but in general, it's not something foreign, right? The Istanbul principles were really building on what organizations were already doing and formulating it in a way that was ambitious, that set the bar very high, but that was reflective of what organizations were or wanted to be. 
So I think that was one of the early challenges. Um, the other challenge, of course, is um, that, uh, as was mentioned in the second panel this morning, there are different codes and different standards that organizations are uh, held uh, up to. Um, so there, you know, national um, standards in Canada. We have, uh, you know, char charities uh, directorate, and so there are certain things that uh, organizations have to do. If you're a humanitarian organization, there's the humanitarian charters. So there's a whole bunch of different. Um, you know, standards and codes of ethics, etc. So I think um, the sense of disbursement that organizations have of having too many things to comply with um, might be a little, um, you know, wears down the enthusiasm. So I think events like uh, the one that we're in today and tomorrow are really important to kind of refocus the energy, re-galvanize uh, momentum for uh, some basic um, the, the concept of accountability and standards, which is what I think the Istanbul Principles embodies. So you think there is a divide between the North and South where uh, the challenges exist and maybe the need for redefining accountability and effectiveness? Absolutely. I think that you know came up this morning. It's one of the very important challenges that we have to face as a community. Um, there's always been, and it was very uh, present during the Istanbul Principle process of coming up with the principles, this divide between the North and South, um, the, the hierarchies that are created, the lack of trust that exists sometimes. Um, one of the principles, the equitable partnership principle, for me is the principle that speaks to that real issue in our, in our uh, community, that we do have um, you know, different realities, but also power dynamics that are not always healthy, and that we have to challenge ourselves to create and support equitable partnerships amongst ourselves, first of all, and then with governments and other stakeholders. But that is a real challenge, and it, it hasn't gone away, so it's, it's work in progress, for sure. The civil society space shrinking, and how can Istanbul principles be helpful and useful in helping safeguard this civil society space? I think we have to be very clear, uh, you know, the Civicus Monitor Report and other ICNL in the US, I mean, there are many, many organizations that are documenting. We have a, a, a special rapporteur at the UN, Maina Kiai, who's been also working on this. I think it's undeniable that shrinking space is, uh, that civic space is shrinking. So, you know, it's almost like being a climate denier if you say, no, that isn't happening. And it's happening in many countries, I would almost venture to say in most countries these days, there's some issues, right, of you know, either bad legislation, intimidation, uh, lack of funding for civil society, uh, lack of dialogue and policy space to involve civil society, and you know, much more extreme cases of imprisonment, harassment, uh, death, etc. So this is a real issue. Um, unfortunately, we don't seem to be moving forward in addressing this, despite all the discourse and all the agreements and acknowledgement that civil society is so important. Uh, so it is a real issue. So to your question of what, um, and this is happening in the south, in the north, I mean west, east, everywhere. I mean there, it's unfortunately quite uh, widespread. So um, can the Istanbul principles help uh, in any way or do they play a role in addressing this? I think part, of course, we as civil society groups, we need an enabling environment to fulfill and to contribute fully to uh, prosperous societies. But um, if that enabling environment does not exist or is being um, uh, challenged, uh, to the degree that we are clear about who we are, what we are about, and that we have a common language that we can use to defend uh, our space and to protect our, our work, I think that helps, definitely. It's also uh, the Istanbul principles and other such uh, codes bring people together around a common uh, a common set of goals, right? So that's important, I think, in, the t in a time where um, our environment is very fragile. As the ambassador from Ireland said uh, today, you know, and, and the representative from the Bangladeshi government, that we need to be united. And it's always good to be united, but when things are difficult, it's that much more important, right? So I think the Istanbul Principles as a unifying um, movement can help uh, us be stronger uh, together to, uh, to address the challenges of shrinking space. Your parting message for a more equitable world? Hmm. Um, I, th I think um, I would say that, you know, as civil society organizations, big and small, grassroots, international, uh, of all 
kinds. I mean, I think that's a, a wonderful thing about civil society that we do, you know, we have implementing agencies, we have advocacy groups, we have a whole range and diversity of, we're a reflection of societies and how they want to organize to achieve uh, social good. Um, we play an important role, I think we know that. Uh, you know, that is acknowledged at least um, in, in discourse. Uh, at uh, global levels, national levels, etc., we need not to lose sight of how important our participation, our action, our presence is, uh, especially for the most marginalized and uh, and um, uh, the poorest around the world. So um, I really liked what somebody said today of not to forget why we're doing this, not to get lost in the bureaucracy and in the complications of doing our work, but just continue to be, to come back to the origins of why um, we're involved in the work that we're involved in. So I think that's really important to remember in, in times that are quite difficult uh, around the world, that we need to be there and we need to be focused on our, our primary mission, which is to do, to do good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We were listening to Julia Sanchez, President CEO of Canadian Council for International Cooperation and Co-Chair of CSO Partnership for Development Effectiveness or CPDE. Julia Sanchez was in conversation with CNS Managing Editor Shobha Shukla. For more details, be welcome to check out CSO Partnership for Development Effectiveness or CPDE's website www.csopartnership.org or visit CNS at www.citizen-news.org. Thanks for listening and stay tuned.